pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, Boone County Board of Supervisors, July 28, 2020. Are there any changes to the tenure agenda? Meet with department heads and elected officials. Terry Johnson, Good morning, County Auditor. Good morning. Uh, um, we have Will they drive down? <laughs> no, they, they, they just Googled Des Moines and see Des Moines County, so they think they live in the right area. So I transferred them to Des Moines County. Email, email process. So anyway, that's, that's about it. We're just still working away and preparing for the general election. No, no, no. That. That I've had questions about yeah. that, and all of our ballots, when we mail out the ballots, the county pays, we put the stamp on and mail the ballots out, and when they return their ballot, post it is paid, so nobody has to put any stamp on their absentee ballot when they return it. That's what I was saying. I had somebody tell me yesterday, no, that's not what it says, but you got to put it on the shirt. And I don't, know, I don't know if that came from another state <laughs> or what, but yeah, we don't. Nobody has to pay to return your ballot in California and in the state of Iowa, so unless you want to overnight it or something like that, but that's what we draw on. We don't have to pay for it. That drop box is still there. Okay. Thank you. Tom, you're a Skype team. Uh, doing pretty good. Keep busy like always. I'd like to thank all the department heads for getting uh, all the officers motivated to take our little security assessment. Um, here either today or tomorrow, um, and I'm going to send an email about this here probably later today, but we're going to push out a little uh, button that everyone's out with. It's called official alert button. So if they see something suspicious come out, they can click on it and automatically uh, delete it per the email to the just the deleted item and also shoot um, us uh, a copy of it for us to analyze to see you know, maybe where it's coming from, especially if we get a lot that are uh, coming from the same source. Uh, only with an outlet. Right. Um, yeah. Like uh, your guys' iPads, I don't think you use the actual outlet app. I think you can use the VPN built in from the county. But everyone else in the county that uh, uses the outlet, they get the SSL out of our Thanks to the source. So we get a lot of emails in that <laughs> people forward us saying, hey, this looks kind of you know, silly, or hey, this looks like it might be bad. This makes it a little easier for them. It wasn't really a test per se, it was, it was an assessment. Question. So, um, but uh, overall, like uh, some of the stuff that I think we need to focus on is uh, password authentication and uh, just overall internet usage. Um, most everyone actually did pretty well on like the email security questions, so thanks for answering those questions. Get back to us there. So, uh, give us some pretty good feedback. So. Right. Next call. Yeah. So now Mallory Longquist, Moore County Treasurer. Good morning. Um, we're just keeping busy. I would like to say that the governor's uh, proclamation, which is on last Friday, the 24th, that continues to impact me, so just keep an eye on it. Um, the property taxes, the, the sections that were in the proclamation, they're extended through this Friday, um, July 21st. 
So property taxes that were due in March now must be paid by this party, so yeah, the 31st to avoid penalty. Um, and then motor vehicle registration for renewal. That ended with this last proclamation, but there's still a, a, a window there of time where people can get in if their taxes, their registrations from January. Um, it went to 18 April, so it's going to be tighter than that. So if anyone has any questions, um, don't hesitate to let me call to talk about it. Okay. Okay. Are most people are getting these things done in this couple? I think this is Another and I, I would mention too that um, we did mail out notices of unpaid taxes and since the proclamation suspended those provisions um, to notify a tax bill, which hasn't happened. But just so as a courtesy, so that people they may have forgotten that happens a lot. They forget that March installment. So as a courtesy, we mailed those out. We have seen a lot of emails coming in as a result of that. Ryan Carter. Uh, good morning. Um, projects are moving along. Uh, started or going to finish pouring the second bridge deck up on Mediapolis Road this morning. Then we'll move over and pour the other half of the approaches on the East Bridge after that. And so that'll let them move on and start working on the approaches and the asphalt, hopefully, on the West one. So the West one's got more work. It's got some grading to be done and stuff. So uh, hopefully, two or three weeks. Time will tell and see how things go. They really got to get on it if they want that, but otherwise they're going to be in this liquidated damages effect. So, um, and the uh, upper flint, we're hoping to pour that tomorrow. We'll try to do it all in one day, but if they can't, they'll finish up Thursday. And then there's some, and that'll be a long day if they pull that off. So uh, then they got some patching and some tie-in work to do. So that's at least a couple weeks, maybe a little bit longer away. But it is making headway. Uh, North Gear is open, so get a chance to run through there. It's a, a great improvement, I'd say. So, uh, um, so a bad time of year. We obviously finished up the, the shaping, did really well. The seating, we're still seeing what comes in and what doesn't. Uh, so, some of it is growing, so hopefully we'll <coughs> see it take off. And if it doesn't, we'll have to deal with it this fall when the conditions are a little bit better for growing. Um, other than that, plenty of other stuff going on. But those are the headlines, I guess. Lisa Schaefer, Point County Attorney. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're just staying busy and getting ready for jury trials that, as far as we know, are still set to begin in the middle of September. Uh, we'll be working on kind of the logistics of that. The, Jury trial task force left everything pretty flexible, so county courthouses could we could each kind of manipulate everything to what works for our courtrooms. Um, obviously, what works here might not work in Van Buren County, et cetera. So we're going to be working on that. Um, we did on our first day of district court in person hearings have um, a defendant who was sentenced to prison test positive. So we started kind of figuring out how we would handle those situations when we have possible exposures. That was last Monday, I believe. Um, Krista's office was very helpful in telling us probably what we needed to do and what we didn't necessarily need to do. Um, and then we also had a law enforcement officer um, doing some undercover work who was exposed as well. Um, and they didn't know it until after I was in discussing cases with him <laughs> the next morning. So we're kind of, as our office, continues to have more contact with law enforcement and the public and we're kind of really developing our own internal procedures for how we're going to handle those exposures but it's working pretty good so far um, we have instituted a mask policy um, basically anybody who comes through our side doors to the main office um, including law enforcement um, has to wear masks i'm also making our folks inside wear masks when they're in common areas um, again, with us doing in-person hearings now, we don't always know what we're encountering. We're just trying to keep everybody in the office safe. Um, the last thing we want to do is have to quarantine 15 people, you know, the second week of September. That would not be good. So we're 
are trying to take proactive measures to make sure we keep everybody healthy. Um, we are interviewing for our, our open position, um, had a couple uh, good resumes, and then we're still working on our cartel implementation. Um, still on track to get that done in October. Other than that, plodding along. Thanks, Lisa. Angie Vaughn, safety. Good morning. Um, still working on our urban construction, road construction project, trying to find some loopholes there and some things that we can do to help protect those guys. Um, also working on the annual report. So we all know that this last year has been a little crazy. We don't realize just how crazy it is until we start putting it all down on paper. So that will be done here pretty soon and presented to my board so we can get it out to you guys and see everything that's going on with that. Is that it? Do you have any update on what um, he was charged with a minor assault um, and then driving down the road on the wrong side. Um, so we're looking, I'm looking at all the different things. Um, they're sending me some stuff on what the law states. I want to make sure that I'm updated on all that and then we'll figure out how we can make those changes, make it to where, because it's just, it's got to where it's happening a lot more often. Um, I know it's an inconvenience, I get that, but those guys are doing their job. They need to be able to maintain safety, um, and people causing these kind of incidents to happen, there's no excuse for it. So we'll keep fighting it until we make some changes to make it really hurt if somebody's involved in causing Ken Heinemann, Community Services. Good morning. Um, keeping busy. Uh, nothing really to report at this time. Um, I know in August there's going to be, Hope Haven's going to turn their residential care facility into a dual diagnosis program. So looking forward to seeing that starting, but uh, nothing else to report. Lisa Hazel, County Report. Good morning. Uh, we just been keeping busy with, um, besides customers and that, trying to get all the old records indexed and scanned in and indexed and on the computer. So we've done most of our aperture cards. Uh, we still have mortgages and miscellaneous aperture cards to do, but we've done tens of thousands of records already and we've got those in the computer. So we just been keeping really busy with that and just trying to move along with it and get more done. So Thank you. Mr. Fogelman, public health. Good morning. We also continue to be busy. Um, we're still doing the serology testing and then um, also still supporting the schools, local health partners, um, with them getting their plans ready for the fall. Just keep calling in to see. And like we said, those are right after WebEx meetings, so that makes it much easier. Um, just want to continue reminding the public to social distance and to handle hygiene. I think that's going to be important as we go into the fall. Thank you. Chris Blue, Public Health. Are there, you know, when, when I read this in the paper update, you know, on this here, if they tell we've got 147 cases, it just doesn't tell how many are recovered. Really don't know how many cases are still active. Is there any uh, add on that any place? There isn't. You know, on that site it says recovered, and the site's down this morning. I tried to get on to, to get those exact numbers. We have um, the problem is now when it used to be recovered was when they came out of isolation, but now it's after 28 days after they've been exposed. So unfortunately, it doesn't really say who's active because after 10 days they're out of isolation. So those numbers aren't accurate anymore at all. Um, we're probably right around that 20 that we're still following at this point in time. But again, that site now does 28 days instead of 10 days. They've changed that system, and I know they're getting ready to switch over to a whole new system starting August 1. So. But that early this morning, but that is about 131 positives for new right now. And we're 
seeing probably one to two cases a day. Again, a lot of that is uh, school standing contact and then how students pick things. Jared Lasseter, land use. Jared Lasseter, land use. Good morning. Uh, I don't uh, have a significant report from the community in general. Um, I'm working on the ordinance update as well as uh, the uh, increase and in permit applications. Um, we do have a minor subdivision out for review. We just uh, put that out like last week, so it'll probably be at least two more weeks. Um, we'll have this. Uh, remotely later this week that uh, addresses the recent uh, zoning, county zoning changes at the state level. We're obviously very familiar with that. Uh, there's, oh, there was some more to it than just the residential location of the uh, members of the zoning commission. So potentially there could be some helpful information there as we, as we update the, the ordinances in general. Um, so uh, we'll see if there's any, any valuable information there that we can incorporate into our ordinance update. Um, apart from that, I don't have any anything significant to report. Thank you. Uh, Jackie Meyer, clerk of court. Jackie Meyer, clerk of court. Good morning. Um, I don't really have a whole lot new to report uh, other than we've been very busy, um, likely to Schaefer had mentioned earlier, we're um, busy trying to figure out um, what the jury trial is recommencing in September you know, what our procedures are going to be as far as integrating the jurors coming into the courthouse. Um, we will be getting ready to, if that September 14th date stays as it is, we'll be getting ready to send out jury summons here pretty quickly. So folks should pay attention to the mail that be in their postcards again. But other than that, just real, real busy. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you. I don't think I missed anybody. Uh, I think Chris has covered COVID-19 for us. Correspondence. Oh, okay. done. Proceed to discussion and vote. We have payroll reimbursement claims in the amount of $1,425. Who approves that? Carrie? Jim Carrie? Yes. Bob Beck? Yes. Tom Roper? Yes. Compensation board appointment or reappointment of uh, Wayne Worthy to represent the supervisors on the compensation board. Timothy Ford. Second. Terry. Bob Beck. Yes. Jim Carrey. Yes. Tom Roper. Yes. We have an abatement of taxes request in the Southeast Iowa Regional Airport. Uh, this is the, that building that has been condemned. They needed that property. It's the house that the was house. up on sheriff sale and was purchased. Uh, I think I believe it's Fire Chief Wood's been a couple of years ago. Third home. Yeah, one of the yeah, 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 yeah. And we have a request to abate uh, uh, property parcel 16 20 151 003 uh, purchase of January 7th or Moy County Sheriff's foreclosure sale. January 16th, the application for property tax exemption to be submitted to the county assessor. He's writing to request the abatement of the second half of the 2018 and 2019 property taxes on said tax on said property. The 427-1 exemptions, I will code the following classes of property shall not be taxed. And 427.1.13, public airports, any lands, the use of which without charge or compensation to the holder of the legal title thereto, thereto has been granted to and accepted by the state or any political subdivision thereof for airport, aircraft landing, or carrier purposes. No further 
Jim Carrey. Tom Beck? Yes. Jim Carrey? Yes. Tom Brock? Yes. Closed session to discuss litigation for Iowa Code 21.5, paragraph 1, subsection C. Closed session. Second. Carry. Jim Carry. Yes. Bob Beck. Yes. Tom Russell. Yes.
coming in and they actually very strong behind the rail. I can't drive anymore. So I can't drive anymore. So I wasn't trying to get by the wheel from my own car. So I was trying to get by the wheel from my own car. So I was trying to get by the wheel from my own car. So I was trying to get by the wheel from my own car. So I was trying to get by the wheel from my own car. Within 20 minutes, I'm in a traffic jam in the outer half of the house. So I'm like, you know, that's a great thing. I am so glad that she got everywhere. That's what you hear. Now she's pregnant. And oh, I know where I need to go. That's going to help her. Too. Young man, how's it going? Absolutely. Uh, all sorts I was glad that they were going to go ahead and do a college Cut it out, out, or they've got an alcohol injection that gets hot. It's not. It's almost like you have to have a 10 point. You know, it's like, well, she'll work that little bit. Well, we can't do that. We can't do that. Yeah. Because that's the only thing you kill my family. We're the same way. Doing. No, I don't want to. I don't want to hear kids. <laughs> oh, my. It doesn't <laughs> seem like that. Oh, my. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm afraid, okay, you do that. I think the lesson on school boards have another work session. It's this way, I can just drop in. That's the best way to go. Yeah, it is. I remember I'll let you know when they. I assume most of your different courses are smaller. Yes. So we have to see. Which is, I mean, going on. I imagine they're probably going to fall asleep. It's kind of weird. You've got a lot of freshman oriented classes. Make sure you report that. Right. Yeah. Those are 
He said it works real well. It makes it a little tighter. Is it foggy? Yeah. They've got to hook it all the time. <laughs> Put your glasses open, which will make all the Yeah. That's what I do. And it doesn't fog as bad if I pass all the time. I'm just a heavy breather. <laughs> It, well, it does make it a little bit better. It does. Um, I was just wondering if you were going to do it. I don't like to look at this. My body temperature is just like so, crazy. Well, because they've they decided to do it. I had one mask that's going to have it. It's in my car, and it's all broken on one ear and everything. So I was so glad to get a new mask because it's been weeks. And I was wearing the same one. Yeah, that's what I get in two hours. I'm going to go ahead and get a new mask. Have you ever had problems with it? I just bought a cooler mask. Yeah, that's what I get. You know, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Those are cool. Or my dog's face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had a chance to wear it tonight. Where'd you get it? Did you get it online? Yeah. yeah. And I'm assuming well, I have my people get their stuff eventually. Yeah, they go. Yeah. They're just like that. Not my people do their assessment eventually. I don't know. Just like, you know, they're not. You did have a lot. I said, I really like that. I thought about it. 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 I thought about it.
years if you want to do years where you don't play in the ditch nearly as much just so far. We try to move all our favorites basically head to edge, but you know, all the way right away to right away. Well, I'm just gonna talk to them about it. Eisen is 70 foot next week, so. Beautiful oh, weather. awesome. That'd be nice. That is perfect. Yeah, that'd be very nice weather. We can break from the heat. Yeah. Kids are moving into college next week, or at least my daughter is. We're so. moving Andrew's stuff up. Okay. He doesn't want to go yet, so he's not. Oh. But. Iowa City? Yeah. Yeah, Faye's moving into her sorority, but she wants to go. It's year oh. two. She ready. She yeah. ready last week, so. Andrew wins the keyboard. Oh yeah, but I think he's a Rex Company. Sorry, Wednesday. No, he's just doing the dorm, and then he's got some buddies coming next year. They seem to be pretty good. So,
applications. Cherry? Jim Perry? Yes. Bob Beck? Yes. Tom Broker? Yes. Okay. Closed session was in regards to a, a property at 2759 Mount Pleasant Street, uh, Rafiki Hotels, LLC. Parcel 11 31 101 045. There was an overpayment of $33,942.22 on a September tax payment. So uh, uh, if the board chooses, we can abate that overpayment and the uh, abatement. Tied to the March 2020 payment to $29,245.78. And the balance of the abatement will go as a credit of $4,696.44 on the payment due in September 2020. If you want, yes, go ahead and grab it. Okay. Have a good day. Take care. <clears throat> okay, we have personnel actions. We have a uh, personnel action for the auditor, Angie Pates. It is Pates, isn't it? Pates. Okay, Angie Pates, a clerk two, <coughs> a 12 month step increase. Previous rate was $31,133.96. The new rate is $31,817.25. Terry? Jim Terry? Yes. Bob Beck? Yes. Tom Broker? Yes. Sheriff's Office? Regarding new reserve deputy hires, please be advised that effective July 28, 2020, the following will be our new reserve deputies within the Des Moines County Sheriff's Office. They will be paid the usual sum of $1 per year. James Lee Pleasant, Joseph Arthur Bowman. Thank you for intention, your attention with this matter. Sincerely, Mike Johnson, Sheriff. Okay, Second. Terry? Bob Beck? Yes. Jim Perry? Yes. Tom Broker. Yes. Besides so approving this, we ought to issue a thank you for that. So those gentlemen, that's a lot of work for a dollar a year. Questions may time. Yes. Of course, we have the jail statistics for June 2020. This report will be on file at the auditor's office and available for public review, either in person or electronic. We have minutes for the regular meeting of July 21st, 2020. Second. Terry? Bob Beck? Yes. Jim Perry? Yes. Tom Broker? <laughs> Abstain. Any other business? I have none. Future agenda items. Committee reports. Okay, we get the planning meeting. Thank you. Right, committee action. 
Christian. The four northern counties and the four southern counties here get together in August sometimes. Thank you. Public input. Anybody from the public? Would like to ask a question or make a comment? The, uh, you may email the Board of Supervisors at boarddmcounty.com, that's B O A R D at dmcounty.com, or call 319 753 8203, extension 4, that's 319 753 8203, extension 4, and we will give you two minutes to make that call or that email. <laughs> that's, that's there's, there's the sheriff. <laughs> As I recall, it's our multiple choice test. If you don't know the answer, so. yeah. <laughs> Actually, the University of Iowa back in the mid '90s did a study yeah. on college multiple choice tests, and it's always B or the longest answer. No, well, that I was I was well out of school. In the 90s. <laughs> I, I had to go without that study. That's too bad. I know in law school you don't have the right answer; you have the best. <laughs> If they're all four right, you just have to decide oh, which one is the yeah. best answer. It's all a matter of opinion, right? That's, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> My wife a question. She might be a difference of opinion, but she always has the best answer. <laughs> uh, two minutes are up. With an eye, we are adjourned. <coughs> we are adjourned. We have a work session following in five minutes with the uh, Public Health Administrator regarding canning facility ordinances. I'll be on the only one just going. Sure, it's a, 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 a public, public meeting. Yeah. Okay. Bye, Angie. Have a good day. So, I don't think it can be passed. It has to be.
we have a work session with the Director of Public Health uh, regarding the Tanning Facility Ordinance. I think we've all got a copy of that. What? I'm going to turn the floor over to you. All right. Well, I'll give some background on this. Um, Moy County Public Health has always done the, the tanning inspections for our tanning salons here in, in, in Wayne County up until last year. Last year, our Department of Public Health removed that from our um, contract due to the fact that they didn't have the resources or the staffing at the state to maintain or oversee the tanning inspections. We had a person at the state who would be the person that we would submit in any inspections, any concerns, and they also managed the, um, the tank um, website. And so they removed that. At that point in time, if they did say, you know, Chapter 46, which is Iowa Code 641, Chapter 46 is still in effect. However, there's no enforcement and there's no um, expectation that the counties would inspect that unless the counties would submit a, a, um, a county ordinance to do so. So um, the Chapter 46 maintains the, um, the minimum requirements for tanning facilities and the Board of Health has looked at, at Chapter 46 as well as the ordinance that you have in front of you and decided that for it's kind of a county, um, for the people of the county, it could be a health risk if they're going to a tanning salon that is not being um, inspected at all. Um, as far as if they use those tanning beds, they could potentially be at risk for some health um, concerns. One of the things that we've noticed through the years as we've done the tanning um, salon inspections is that they're permitted by the state. They're, they're required to, when we go in and we inspect um, the tanning salon, we make sure that they've been have the permits. And that simply starts after the construction of the of the facility as well as they submit the plans into the state, they tell them what they're going to do. So if we have a new tanning salon, they tell them what they're going to have, what their beds look like, um, give them an overview. And then the state approves that and gives them a permit. But if no one's inspecting the tanning salons, we won't know if the salons in the county are even permitted because no one at this point in time would be regulating that. So that would be one of the concerns. Did they, would they would get their permits from the state? They still would get their permits from the state. It costs five dollars. Okay. They, they have somebody that does that. They just don't have anybody to review and report you. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, the, absolutely. So it the they also still have to submit in um, plans if they're going to be a new tanning facility. That would be one of the criteria for establishing the tanning facility. They'll set out in forty in chapter forty six before they get the permits. So they would still have to do that piece as well. Um, and again, the if no one's inspecting and making sure that they have permits, then you know it's a health potential that people would open up a tanning salon and there would be um, no permit issued, no you know in, um, verification of their plans or the equipment they're using prior to them opening. So um, inspections would ensure that facility complies with Chapter Forty Six. It will monitor for the um, permits that would be issued by the state. It'll verify, our inspections verifies that the staff have been trained. We're expecting the owner operator to have been tested um, on Chapter 46, and that's done through the local health department. They come in, they pay their, um, I don't know, it's $30. They pay the, um, their monies, and then they will take the testing on Chapter 46. That tells us that the owner operator, the person that's going to be overseeing the other staff, has the basic understanding of you know, what the expectation is as far as cleaning and the training. Um, that person then would make sure that their staff is trained. Uh, we, first of all, they would make sure that they only have staff that are 16 years or older and that the staff have gotten uh, the understanding of what Chapter 46 does talk, um, talk to. They have to do that training as well as they have to document that and keep that on for five, for five years. Um, part of that training includes educating on the risk of tanning ultraviolet lights um, obviously cause lots of risks and we would have to worry about the uh, ultraviolet radiation as far as the eyes, burning the eyes, you know, potential reactions, those type of things. And those are all things that we would ensure that um, the owner operator obviously would know, but also educate the staff that would be working with the customers. So if someone did have some sort of a reaction, they would be able to um, identify those reactions, do the appropriate notifications as well as the appropriate um, follow-up. You know, part of this would also be, um, you know, educating the public on tanning risks, making sure those signs are posted, and making sure that um, they're utilizing the appropriate lights in their tanning beds, and that would be something that we would look at as well. 
you make sure the warning signs are up, back to back, um, ultraviolet light, which could potentially, you know, premature aging, you know, those reactions that I talked about, um, making sure that there's signage and people are wearing eye protection. That's very important when people go into a tanning bed, that they're aware of that because UV lights, ultraviolet lights can burn the eyes. Um, there's also the need to have a timer. Um, I don't know, you know, the tanning beds, they're set up to where either and according to the skin type a person has, if you have a very bare skin type, the idea is that person is educated and you know, and you really shouldn't go the full time. Maybe the first time you go, let's go the smaller amount of time. Really educating people to do that, plus educating on the fact that they're um, the, the timer timer is set and that there's a manual shut off switch, um, and then um, that there's uh, physical barriers for someone who's not going to be touching the lights directly. That that all the um, tanning beds are in good working operation. That they're reporting all tanning injuries, and that there's being cleaning done in between one person to the next. Otherwise, people can get contact dermatitis or whatever it is from unsanitary conditions. So there's lots of things that if no one is is inspecting these, um, that could potentially go wrong and be harmful to our residents of our county. We did um, the Board of Health, when we had this discussion, um, look at subcontracting this out to a to us, actually. Um, we already have a 28 fee agreement with them. Their current charge is $40 an hour at 50 cents a mile. Um, currently, we're able to, according to Chapter 46, bill $33 per bed that we inspect. Um, that could say, exceed $330 per establishment. And um, if they were looking at this, that would um, cover the cost of the inspections that us would be doing. And uh, currently, we only have um, 12 beds in the county. Again, we would have to make sure that we are looking at getting you now since we've done these inspections, making sure that there's no new um, locations happening, but that's what we'd be looking at as well. Okay. I understand. We haven't been inspecting for a while now, have we? No, not for a year. Uh, the, the contract ended, <coughs> it would have been June 30th of last year. And I have to say, when we did inspections, there were things that we noticed there was problems. Making sure that you know, the training records, we actually found some of the owner operators had gotten their five year training done and was yeah. expiring. And the problem with that is the person who's teaching everybody else doesn't have the knowledge to teach. So now we have a whole facility that may not have the knowledge that they need to operate the training facility. Bruce, with Russ, he's, he's got the credentials. But uh, uh, I'm a little on the other side of the uh, state's attorney side of the system, not the public defender business. I need my guy to uh, the law there. And uh, my mom had a tanning, she had a beauty shop for example, she had a tanning bed. Pretty much people came every even then, knew the tanning was hard on you, and that uh, they were they were aware they didn't want to be interrupted because it's anti. And I can't imagine anything today that you're going to get anybody to go into that has to be clean. That's uh, 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 anyway, I uh, and I appreciate it, and I understand it's the board of health's job to bring to address any of these things they, they think need regulating. Uh, I'm not in favor of a, of a county ordinance like that. That's just my my two cents. Add something. I, I think it's probably not your mom's friend that would do the. I think this would protect our young people because these are those young teenagers that they don't look to make sure that that bed has a sign that says recently sanitized because that's you know usually that's what they're supposed to have is once they clean it that there's a sanitized. I think it's it's these young girls, um, eighteen year olds, because if no one's regulating this, are we making sure that people are tanning with? Parental guidance or, or parental permission because honestly, we would want, first of all, we wouldn't want 14 year olds running the tanning beds, and we wouldn't want um, you know, 14 year olds going in and tanning without parental consent. I think that's where that piece 
Um, and it wouldn't um, go above and beyond what the state already has in place. It would just simply enforce the the, um, the code that that the state has already put in place. It's just, and you're right, not putting the funds um, in that mail it to me, that inspection piece. And many counties have put the units in place. If Bill requires this, for this inspection, and they're putting it down on the county, is this? The state doesn't require it anymore. Once they took it out of our contract, it was okay. no longer required. And that's why they said no if we required. chose to do that, that it would require an ordinance to do that because that would give the procedure of how they do it going forward. And I think a lot of theirs is, well, it, as I watched kind of what happened on the state level was, you know, they used the resources <laughs> elsewhere. And that's why that was a position yeah. that they did not feel or fill once that person retired. Oh, public hearing. Yeah. 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 And uh, I've discussed in public. Are you or if you're ready to go? I got it. I'm not sure about the hearing. Okay, good. Another thing. Let's take it. Yeah, if, uh, if uh, you want to set it up for a public hearing on this. Could they, uh, could a tiny bed operator request that you come and do it? So um, they could. Well, not unless we have a, an or ordinance. <clears throat> we would not have the guidelines to go to. No, we could not do the inspection without the ordinance. Could, could, uh, uh, could they call Russ and say, would you come and inspect this and we can put up a sign so that we don't inspect them? I don't, I don't have that answer. I mean, I guess that would be, a, I, I, I don't know. You know, because we don't have an, because we would work under the county ordinance, I don't know that if we, Russ, would they be as a private, would they be able to do that in the county? Because they have, County ordinances where they're doing it now, but I don't know if it'd be filed. Well, they're, they're doing a county ordinance now that I would hold it there. I don't, I, I, I don't know if I have to talk to the talk to the board about it. Do we find out is there a one of the one of the uh, ideas about is about uh, regulations and a lot of times. Implicit regulation that becomes a default, you know. Whereas uh, if if you look around now, you know, it's like we want you want you to wear a mask or we high V or whatever they should we wipe mm -hmm. off that, you know, everything and they compete that way. And when somebody says, Well, you know, the county ordinance is, is you know, that's what everybody does. Well, if you come to my tanning booth or, or whatever it is, or used to be it was a bed, I have no idea what they have now. And uh because I remember my, on my beauty shop, you know, after somebody used it, they come in with a, just wipe it down, whatever they'll teach. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but, uh, 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 but anyway, that's, we can, maybe it'd be a good, good idea just to have a public hearing and get people here with that. Uh, my, my biggest concern, you know, on, on an ordinance like this, if, if we do have an ordinance, Okay, somebody like Russ or whoever goes in inspection. Somebody does get burnt real severely, and uh, what's our liability? Because we didn't inspect it right. If there's going to be a lawsuit on them people, there's definitely going to be a lawsuit come back on the county. I asked Lisa about the liability in this, and she said as long as the um, inspection is done accurately, which I think Russ would do a very good job, and he does it in other counties. As long as that's done according to the way inspections need to be done, according to Chapter 46, the liability is to carry the day. But that was a question the Board of Health also had about the discipline. That, that, that would be my main concern. And 
wonder if our insurance, um, I, you know, you know, I mean, that would be something as well. You know, we have the, um, remember there's a subcontract. So I don't know, but if the public health insurance would have any, you know, that's something I can hear. Is it we would, uh, we are contact ICAP. to 14 to 10 to 20 days, something like that. Okay. And they've got two or three different, I'd have to, I'd have they've to. got two or three different time limits, yeah. depending on what it is, just to keep you on and, your toes. And usually when I advertise that, I advertise the duration of the coverage to be Yeah, you'd still have to put in a notice about it. But, but yeah, I would, I would, uh, we would spend a couple of free UTVs, you know, whatever. I think right? that one, we have three on that. Twelve beds, uh, how many businesses? Uh, five. Let me count. Five, five businesses, but you got 12 beds? Yes. Okay, wait, wait. People, I got the count right. The, people used to have sometimes, somebody would have one of those in private yeah. homes. Still have those. Is that the areas. rural areas listed? Is that there? Five, five businesses, and that all in the county. Yeah, all in the because county. Because the city takes care of their own, right? Um, no, we well we build all over. So oh. we actually the locations that we have is like Anytime Fitness, um, Curly and Salon, Send Impact out on the Tannery, or whatever that road is by Kirkwood. Kirkwood Street and the other one on Roosevelt. We only have the one, I think, in Minneapolis um, that Creative Visions is in Minneapolis. The rest of them all in Rose. I mean, so we do all of them here in town. The thing is, is just, again, this is the list we had when they closed. You know, what has sprung up since then? Uh, because obviously we've not um, been, you know, we would, if there was a candy place we've heard about, social media, what have you, we would follow up to make sure they're permitted. That's part of what we did. We don't do that at this point in time, so we don't know how, how unauthorized things are out there. Um, but no, we would not do. It would not be private candy beds. We would only do public candy beds. I would also suspect the candy beds wouldn't be in any of the I'd ask Bob, did, did some people still have those in their homes? Or was that yes, still yeah. Yeah. people still have those in their homes. A lot of people still have those in their homes. You know, they've, they've evolved somewhat. I, I think that's the, the good thing is, is just making sure that even the older ones are still being practical and they don't have to be. I recall you're supposed to change the bulbs every so often or something. Yet for, of course, everybody knows that if you don't have good bulbs, they don't go there. <laughs> They're not warm enough, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you know, the, the sand of candy beds, some of the people use a lot now too, but, and I think they can be used. Well, they have stand up now? They do have stand up, okay, the one in, in the Slim Impact there on Roosevelt, mm -hmm. I think they're in there. Yeah. And this is fall. Yeah. This is fall. My divorce joke has to go. <laughs> <laughs> In short pants and check our pants. That would that would that would cut our ratings in half. <laughs> That'd be the last time anybody ever tuned in for a board meeting. Uh, it's too bad that the municipalities that's got them doesn't have something set up where they check them themselves. But I kind of got a feeling. I hate everything that comes down from always is put on the county. Well, I think. 
you know, unfortunately, um, when they decided not to follow up on this at the state level, they didn't really ask our opinion, but I think that would have been very important for them to make sure we had and to keep that subcontract because essentially, again, um, having a part of our contract, the, the inspection fees pretty well pays for, you know, our time. So, yeah, I agree with you. The thing is, if everyone did your due diligence and did this correctly, there'd be no concern, but we all know that no one's watching, so let's pick back up corners. You guys, why don't you, uh, Carrie can find out what the, uh, how long notice has to be with the, you know, with, and find a time that works for you, and uh, uh, we'll set up a, put it on the agenda as a, as a public, uh, public, uh, public hearing, is that a word? Public hearing for Kane and Berkeley. For Kane and Berkeley. And facility. Okay. How are we going to operate? Can, can you send this to me, Krista, because I noticed that there was... Oh, did I miss something? Yeah, sorry. and then under section five testing costs, there's a B in there, but there's nothing oh, sorry. underneath of that. Oh, yeah, yeah I didn't see that either. Sorry. Because once we get everything set up, then I'll post that on our website. Good. Yeah. Oh, well, I printed that, that in a hurry <coughs> um, before I walked out this way. I'm like, oh, I can't take the one that says draft. I'll figure out. Yeah, so sorry, I didn't catch up. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.